and welcome to VR Update, where I talk about the latest VR and AR news. I'm your host, Kaz, and today we have news about Oculus, Facebook banning cloud-based PC VR streaming, ECC's new hardware releases, and I'm going to talk about whether I think the new HTC VR headset is coming or not. I got AR news and much more exciting stuff. But before we get started, I want to say that I'm changing this format a little bit. Instead of posting these videos only on a Friday, I will post them whenever big news is out to make them more relevant. Hopefully then we'll get more views and most importantly, it will give me more flexibility to make other videos as well when there is not a lot of news. I hope you still watch them as that's the biggest support you can give us for free and I will see how it goes. So if you'd like to be kept up to date with VR, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet as that also helps a lot. And now join me for this update. Okay, let's start with Oculus news. First off, data. So the Oculus Quest 2 is now the most used VR headset on Steam. That is according to the results for the Steam hardware survey from February. And the Oculus app on Android has been downloaded more than 5 million times, even though that's not the most accurate way to measure the Quest user base, still, that's a lot of people. This number was just 1 million two years ago, so that's like a 5x. VR is certainly not a fad as some news sources still wonder for some reason. Then the Quest 2 120Hz update has been pushed back to quarter 2 in the Oculus developer roadmap. Before this was quarter 1 and with higher confidence, so it could be that this will take longer than expected. Oculus is also conducting user research about new features for the Oculus home environment. That's the environment you are put in after you start up your quests. Thanks to IJ Hendricks for sending us this tip, he got an email that says Oculus is interested in thoughts on an idea for Oculus Home. Imagine Oculus Home as a social space where you can be with friends and family as VR avatars. Below is an example. It follows with a survey asking what people would want to do in there. This reminds me of the Rift Home where it was already possible to invite friends into a home that you customized yourself. But it looks like Oculus may be making one separate from this since they are sending out this survey. As IJ Hendrix says, they may be looking to uh, make an extension of Facebook's upcoming social game Horizon. I really enjoy the Rift Home features and I've always wanted this on the Quest, so I hope it's coming. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any tips for this uh, VR news video, definitely send it over to me via Twitter or Discord and maybe next time I will include yours. I have two more pieces of Oculus news. Unfortunately, Facebook is disallowing cloud PC VR gaming for now. Facebook has added a new VRC, which is a virtual reality check, a requirement for developers, and this new VRC bans cloud PC VR gaming. This means services like Shadow are not allowed on the official Quest Store or App Lab. Side loading is still possible though. And don't confuse this with virtual desktop as Facebook is still allowing PC VR streaming from a local source, so virtual desktop is still allowed. Facebook's reasoning for this is the same as what happened with VD actually. They say cloud-based VR streaming is still too new and could impact comfort, so that's her reasoning. As what happened with VD, at least we now know that Facebook may change its minds later on. So last piece of Quest news and it's exciting. In an interview with The Information, Mr. Zuckerberg has said he wants eye tracking and facial tracking in the future iterations of the Quest. This means we could get exactly that in a Quest 3 or 4. These are Mark's personal most wanted features because he's excited about social presence. Having realistic avatars that animate with your face can help with communicating well. We're not there yet for a while as there are still challenges to overcome first, but hey, I think this is an awesome future. Some of uh, the most fun I had in VR is usually with multiplayer games and having a more social presence will surely add more to it. Interestingly, it seems like the entire VR industry is moving towards leveling up or social experiences. It's no doubt that the pandemic is accelerating this. HTC has also announced something for this, so on that note, 
let's move on to the next piece of news. Everyone talked about ACC last week as they've teased two images on Twitter and did a little back and forth banter with Oculus. Everyone's hoping for a new consumer focused VR headset, but I was skeptical as HTC has moved more and more towards enterprise, but that doesn't mean I gave up all my hope. I'll talk more about this later, but as it turns out, HTC's were teasing these two things. A new HTC Vive Tracker 3.0 for full body tracking. This one has 75% more battery life, a sleeker form factor, is 33% smaller, 15% lighter, and it is still only for Steam VR tracking systems. It is available for order in the US from March 24th and available right now in Europe for $130 per tracker. Before we dive into the second five announcement, I did want to note that uh, Tundra, the five tracker competitor, also announced their prices $95 per piece. Okay, second HTC hardware release is the Vive Facial Tracker that can capture lower face movement with precision with almost zero latency. It can track up to 38 facial movements using dual cameras and infrared illumination to keep your mouth lit even in low light situations. This levels up our social experience for sure. However, it is only compatible with the Vive Pro series which is marketed as an enterprise headset and is expensive. I feel like they missed an opportunity here to make this compatible with all Steam VR headsets. But I am a bit intrigued, so I did buy one of these facial trackers, which uh, I will be covering later on on the channel. While it's pretty cool to have this deck out now, I am a little disappointed, but I do still have hope. I do think they will be coming with another VR headset later on. They've been teasing even more on their Instagram. Plus, the president of Vive, Alvin Graylin, has said in an interview with Teleport Me that an HTC standalone VR headset is coming this year. Hopefully this means we'll hear more about a new VR headset later on. Uh, but don't get your hopes up too much for a Quest competitor because Alvin also said it won't be competing with Oculus. That probably means it won't be as affordable as the Quest, but still. I welcome it. I hope it comes. So what do you think about ACC's new hardware announcements? Disappointed? Or are you getting it? Or do you think there's another thing coming? Let me know in the comments below. And now, moving on to augmented reality. This is a cool one, so we already know Facebook's first smart glasses is launching this year. But for the next pair in the future, you may be controlling it with your wrist. A new post on Facebook Reality Labs talks about her research on neural input technology. The company imagines AR glasses to work together with a soft wristband that will measure hand and finger movement to control your AR glasses. Next week, we'll get more information on nearer term research wrist-based input combined with a usable but limited contextualized AI, AI that will dynamically adapt to you and your environment. Later in the year, they will also share research on groundbreaking work in soft robotics to build comfortable all-day wearable devices, and they'll share an update on their haptic glove research. Now, keep in mind this will probably not come for a couple of years, but nonetheless, I think this is exciting. I'm intrigued about this too. I'll link this post below for those interested. Oh my goodness, we have like storm outside, so you can probably hear it. I apologize. But let's continue. Last week, Microsoft hosted a keynote fully in VR, in Altspace to be specific. And while I could not attend it, I uh, read about it and heard from friends how good it was as it combined AR with VR and beautifully changing environments in 360. So you could also see the keynote speaker in full, like in real life, but then he was in AR. But if you're interested in what went on, Road to VR did attend it and he has a really nice article on it. So. Uh, link is below. But two notable things were announced there. First, Microsoft Mesh is software that's like Microsoft Teams, an online collaboration tool. But what makes Mesh different is that it will work across HoloLens 2, most VR headsets, PCs and phones plus tablets. So yes, it's an immersive tool that will allow you to come together digitally with colleagues and it looks like something far in the future. But it's already here. This makes sense, I think, that Microsoft has made their own software as 
they are surface based. It's also good to see how much they believe in the XR space. But another cool thing was that during the event, they demonstrated what Microsoft Mesh is capable of. So they also showed off a prototype for a multiplayer version of Pokemon Go running on HoloLens 2. In the demo, the CEO of Neontic was at the park where he threw a Pokeball to summon Pikachu and then he met up with another player to battle. Having grown up with Pokemon, I would totally get AR glasses just to play this game. Unfortunately, it's a proof of concept, but who knows, I think the chances are that the Neon Tick will uh, bring this out to other more affordable AR glasses too. Let's hope so. And as always, for those who are looking for something to do this weekend, let's talk about new VR game releases or updates. First up, I thought this was cool, Rec Room, the free social VR game will be paying out 1 million US dollars to its creators in 2021. Rec Room has a creator compensation program where players who meet certain requirements are eligible to get paid for their creations in the game. You do need at least 1 million tokens earned from selling inventions and keys to other players and you also need an active Rec Room Plus membership, but the idea is that some creators could turn playing Rec Room a part-time or even a full-time job. I think this is very cool. I mean, why not? With the latest hype around NFTs, short for non funkable tokens in uh, crypto, I'm seeing more and more games popping up that are play to earn and uh, they make use of NFTs. So just by spending more time on a game, the more money you can make by winning NFTs. I've actually been pretty addicted to one myself called Gods Unchained. So if you're curious, I'll put the link below, but uh, I digress a little. While Rec Room's uh, creator conversations aren't NFTs, it just uh, reminded me of it as I personally believe play to earn games are the future of gaming as much as I believe blockchains will be the future too. But let's move on to other game releases. On Oculus Quest, we've got new games too. Luna, an interactive storybook with puzzles. The Climb 2, of course, if you're curious about the gameplay, you can check out our latest uh, live stream, which I'll link below. I also wanted to highlight two free App Lab games, First Steps and Tiny Castles, both experimental games by Oculus to showcase hand interactions. First Steps is that uh, tutorial that uh, you've already seen before, but this one has hand striking. So uh, I do think they are uh, demos, so they will lack a challenge, but they are free, so they could be nice titles to show off VR with. The links are below. And remember, you can download App Lab games just by clicking the link on any device. Now, with the PSVR 2 now confirmed, great, great news by the way, as I thought uh, Sony had given up on VR, but now uh, we know they still see value in it. So the PSVR 2 is uh, not coming this year, but it is coming and it will have new features like features seen in the DualSense controllers, which would be perfect for VR. So I cannot wait to hear more. So with this news, last week Sony also came with PSVR game announcements, six new games coming on the platform. Most uh, of these games are also coming to Quest or PC VR, and I'm really excited about most of these, so uh, let's talk about them. First, the long-awaited four-player co-op zombie shooter, After the Fall, is now coming this summer. Not only for PSVR, but also for PC VR. Then, Zenith's cross-platform MMORPG inspired by anime is also coming to PSVR, PC VR, and to top it all off, it is also coming on Quest. You can pre-order the game now, check the link below, and the first alpha is coming on April 19th. I just pre-ordered the deluxe version. Then we got I Expect You To Die 2, I talked about this before. Fracked by the uh, familiar VR deaths and dreams comes a frantic action adventure game on skis. Reminds me a little of Borderlands and uh, it's coming this summer. We also have Song of the Smoke, which is an atmospheric survival adventure game and also coming on Quest later this year. The graphics are just beautiful. Apparently this is by the same artist as uh, early Zelda games, so uh, this looks exactly like my cup of tea. Then 
Last but not least, unofficial Doom 3 is coming exclusively on PSVR on March 29th. Let me know your favorite game announcement in the comments below. Now, if you want to discuss these topics further with us, join our live stream tomorrow at 9 p.m. set right here on the channel. We live stream every Friday and we would love to chill with you then. Thanks for watching and don't forget a free way to support us is to like, comment and just watching more videos. A special thanks go to our champions, especially these patrons down below. And as always, VR on!